Welcome back to the Splash of Sass podcast. I am your host, Amy Quinley. This is the unofficial Jeff Lewis Live after show, and he would be extremely disappointed in me and my work ethic because I have missed a couple episodes. But you guys, it is my fault. I'm not going to blame anybody else except for me, but medical conditions that we can discuss at a later date. I will tell you just as a fun little quip, um, I, I might have mentioned this before, but the IT guy at my work, he definitely has a crush on me and I'm in the office one day a week and he keeps on finding reasons to come and see me. This all started because I needed a new laptop and once he met me, he now will not leave me alone. The second that we're done talking in person when he's working on my computer, he then emails me and it's just, it. at first it was a little cute because he was a little cute, but then I did a too hard of a Google and He's 47. I'm 31. Okay. So if there's going to be a 16 year age gap, like you better be buying me a Range Rover. Oh, this better be a La La Randall Emmett kind of situation. Like I want a house in the hills. I'm not dating a 47 year old, somebody 16 years older than me, who's just a few tier scores above me in the office. Like, what are you, what are you doing with your life, bro? And not to say anything, you know, like everyone is doing great at any salary in any position, whatever. It really just goes back to all of the conversations we've had and how he just talks about watching alien movies on Netflix all the time. And I thought it was like cute that he was like in his late thirties and, you know, still just uh, a couch potato. And now at 47, I'm like, Oh, you're just going to die as grandpa Joe from Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory, which to be fair, I feel like grandpa Joe constantly. Like I just am always either on the go like crazy and just never sitting down and blah, blah, blah. Or I am a corpse all day and I just lay in the same spot and the couch cushion sinks a few feet just from me laying on it. When I was growing up, I used to be like the original binger back with TiVo and I would just record, I'd become obsessed with sitcoms and I would just record, including flipping out, and I would just record as much as I could and then just binge hard. Like the Brady Bunch, Everybody Loves Raymond, King O Queens. Um, my mom, because I would watch TV so often as a young child on the couch, my mom had to put a fucking wooden plank under our beautiful couch because under the cushion part of it, because I, it had sunk in so much and the cushions like contorted to my body. And so it was like a Tempur-Pedic couch just for me. It just fit my body. <laughs> it was great. I loved it. Moving on to the Jeff Lewis live show. All right. So is there a reason I've been slacking? I don't know. Can I just say, first of all, I love Carrie Lewis. She was on Monday, April 10th. Then we had Julian Brandy on April 11th. I fucking love them so much. And we just have to quickly talk because... Everybody, when they first, I, not let's not generalize. I always got to generalize. Brandy and Julie, it at first could come across as if they are a um, pair or a couple or something. But very quickly, you realize, no, they're just literally the bestest of friends. They're the cutest. They're friend goals for life. And we never really hear about Brandy's husband. But we did know that she was married. We just never hear about him. He's like the Oz behind the curtain. Like he's just not even, it's, who is he? Who is he? And Brandy said that she doesn't like to bring him out because she doesn't like cross streaming, which Jameson doesn't either. And uh, which is funny to me because I feel like they would both be the two that are into like some weird kink, like golden shower type shit, but we don't need to get into that. And that is very alleged. I just, that's just my own analytics coming into play. So Brandy was like, everyone saying how hot he is to the point where I'm like, what the fuck? Why does everybody think I have an ugly husband? No one thinks that Brandy. No one would ever think you have an ugly husband. Like you are just, I love Brandy. She reminds me of um, Ramona Quimby from Beverly Beezus and Ramona. 
by Beverly Quinn, I believe. Oh my gosh, so many Quinn, Quimby's, Quinley's. Amy Quinley, that's me. So she was like, why does everyone think I have an ugly husband? We don't, Brandy. We genuinely just did not even know what to think about him. Like, why were you hiding him for this long? And if he got along with everybody, which he did, he had a great time. Him and Kian, Kian, Kian forgot about fucking Krista for a second and was just content with Brandy's husband hanging out. And... uh, we, I, I need him on the show. Like, I know that Brandy's like from now on, he's absolutely never coming out again because my worst fear happened and he enjoyed himself and other people enjoyed him as well. And now it's just too close for comfort. Everybody, I don't need all these stories going around, but no, I don't want that life together. I want things separate, which look, everyone gets to be however they want, but we get to be curious little kittens and I need Brandy's husband on an episode of Jeff Lewis live, please with Julie and Brandy. Honestly, Brandy can sit this one out. If she, if she doesn't want to cross stream, then can we have Julie and Brandy's husband on the next episode, please? I love you so much, Brandy. You can have your own episode, but like, if you don't want to be there and you don't want to cross stream, then you're the one that has to sit out because now we are invested. We need to know about hubby. Actually, I want Kian. I want Kian to interview him too. All right. So that's going to be a thing. That's what this is why this podcast needs to exist, because I just have ideas and questions about Jeff and the show and everything. And I'm tossing it back out in the uni. So you're welcome to nobody that wanted this. So yesterday we had uh, Matt Rogers on the Wednesday, April 12th show. To be honest, you guys, sorry, I kind of forget what he was, like comedian, entertainer, stripper from High Tops. I don't really know. But we will circle back because, no, you know, we're not circling anywhere. We're stopping. It's a hard stop at these High Top strippers because this is the third day in a row that Jeff has brought up the fact that when they were at Jameson's birthday party on Saturday at high tops, strippers came out, which none of us, but did anybody know that? Like, did anybody think high tops was that kind of place? I don't know why, but in my head, I picture high tops to be like the seating area, the food area in Dave and Buster's, <laughs> which I think probably cause it's just actual high tops, but I don't know why that's the image. I know that I can just Google high tops in West Hollywood and I can see the Yelp images of inside. I can probably go on a 3D tour, whatever, but I like the image in my head instead. So we're going to go with that. But Jeff called out all the strippers for having small dicks, which made me audibly gasp because I just don't like, I just feel bad talking about people's body parts like that. Honestly, just because I have small boobs. That's really the only reason. And anytime everyone's like, boobs, boobs, woo, we love boobs. And I'm like, ugh, but you guys wouldn't love mine because they're like, Jeff has bigger ones than me. Everybody, all the boys have bigger ones than me, which is fine. It's all fine. But if I have to wear a bra, so should you, okay? Or none of us have to wear one. It's one or the other. But just the fact that because I have giant, not giant, that's the opposite. Just because I have little satchels with points sticking out of them, little poinsettias, like guys can't see it and they're just like, oh my God, I need to fuck that right now. No, that's not fair. Because again, half of you can look in the mirror and look at your own boobs and I promise you they're bigger than mine. So again, we're either all in it together or no bras, free the nip, full life. Back to the strippers and small dicks. So it was shocking that Jeff said this for two reasons, right? Two reasons. Because it's either true and the strippers do have small dicks there And if so, like, that's okay. You guys, like, again, we're all inclusive, all inclusive, honey, of all body types. I know Jeff might not be, but on the after show we are. And so now they're either going to always send the micro penises at you or what they're going to do is uh, spit in your fucking drinks and food from now on. Like, who wants to hear that they have a small dick, you know? Unless you're saying it in a positive way. Like, oh my God, that dick was so small. Damn, come shove that in my face. I don't even know, you know? But like, unless it's, there was no um compliment sandwich. It wasn't like, 
they had the nicest bodies. Dicks were a little small, but d- the way that they moved them, the motion in that ocean. Yeah, sign me up for sailing lessons. It was not like that at all, you guys. It was like jump ship, man overboard, abort, let the boat burn in the water and everybody just get eaten by a shark. Like he is just doubling, tripling down that the strippers have small dicks. So again, if I was, and we know that everybody listens. I know Sirius doesn't want to tell Jeff this, but clearly Clearly, Jeff, you have your own after show, babe. Like, we listen. We listen. We hear. And so the strippers at High Tops are listening. Now, they're either the ones that do have big dicks are probably not going to come and see you because now they're going to support their small dick brethren's brethren's. And so, again, you either no one wants to hear that they have a small dick if you didn't compliment them. So now you just pissed off all of the strippers at High Tops, all of the employees who are friends with the strippers at High Tops. And now they want they want like good marketing. You know, they want big dick. They want big dick energy. You could have at least said they had big dick energy. Anything, anything. Okay, super quick story about micro penises, too. A guy I dated recently, I thought that he had one. The first time that we hooked up, he first went down on me and then immediately, like the way it transitioned into sex, I just didn't even see. It was like all of a sudden the dick was inside of me. And so it was wrapped up safely. Everybody, thank you. Be always be safe. And if you're too scared to say we should use a condom, then you should not be having sex with that person. That's the rule. Okay. And you should be wearing a condom no matter what, because STDs like birth control can't protect you with that. So I am all about it. And don't use like those gross condoms that they give you for free in anywhere these those are like literally balloon animals like those are not right for the body i view they hurt there's expensive ones but like really nice ones that feel like nothing feel like a glove they're even starting to come in um different colors so they're all inclusive honey about all diversity shapes and sizes so anyways the first time that we had sex when he just went right into me and And it did not feel like a micro there. But then when we were cuddling on the couch later, there were so many other things going on at once. Like you're sitting there being like, Amy, what do you mean? It was kind of one. You kind of saw it. It's like, I couldn't be like, hey, can you stand up? And I just stare at you for a minute. Like it was, everything was happening. We're watching a movie. There's and uh, my cats are running around and I'm trying to make sure that no tail goes into the wrong hole and thing, you know, things happen. So everyone keep their tails to themselves. And so I assumed that it was, it looked so small when I got a glance of it. And then I kind of ended it and wanted to be friends after that for a different reason. And so when we had sex the second time, I was so happily surprised to learn that it wasn't, it wasn't micro. It was definitely small, but he was a grower, not a shower. And I had never experienced that at this level before. He was very much a grower and very much not a shower. So I just want to say justice for the high top strippers. They might be on that same level or the AC was just working extra hard that day and it was cold. Okay. So I just, I, I, I believe you high top strippers. You guys are perfect and big enough for all of us you're big enough for the rest of us again jeff this is why i need this after show this is why i'm here i love you so much we're gonna fix this and um okay so again you can either say that you were kidding you can say that you actually love small dicks you prefer them you wish that they were there or you can i guess pull the blackout card which all right so i have i'm gonna quickly talk about two more things and jeff is not gonna love this part because Call me Teddy Mellencamp. I am the accountability coach. And the only reason that I'm doing this is because Jeff holds everybody else accountable in terms of drinking. I think he hasn't done it recently, but he's been such a drink counter. We all know this. He follows after his dad's footsteps. He counts everybody's drinks. He's always obsessed with who's drunk, who's doing this, who's that, blah, 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 all of that. So I would just like to point out that Jeff blacked out for at least a little bit at High Tops on Saturday, and it made me remember that he blacked out two weeks ago as well at his own birthday party when they went out. Because he was talking about how he blacked out for a little bit and him and Alyssa were grinding and all of that. So 
again, it's not like he's just walking around shit faced all the time. Well, no, no, no. He really isn't. And from this week, he said that he's been cutting it back a little, reeling it in. And I understand we all, I've been blackout so many times, Jeff. We can stumble down that memory lane anytime you want to. Trust me, I am not here to judge. I am just saying it is clear that Jeff is going through something. Like, you don't get like that because you're in a great place in life. We also haven't heard Stu being mentioned this week. I think things are definitely happening. Also, everything going on with Monroe and Gage. I just genuinely have so much empathy for Jeff. Like I re- I'm not fatigued by you yet. Like I genuinely have so much empathy because especially with your, his daughter Monroe, she came back from school vacation on a late flight the day before school started and missed that day back at school. And it's just like things like that, like on top of relationship issues and you not making healthy choices for your own self and just everything at once you, it's just like feels like shit. It just feels like you're in a shit storm in just one of those ebbs and flows. And this is one of the lows where you just want how like you just want it to be better. And so just as somebody and Jeff has mentioned that he's flipped out on like five people already. He's taking it out on poor Aurora. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, Jeff might have to start giving out some trips to wine country. Go see the high low boys. Hideaway low boys and anybody really that is in Jeff's path right now, because again, everything's a projection. So if somebody's in that, then this is me speaking as somebody who is exactly like Jeff, where I turn into this Tasmanian tornado devil and anybody in my path, just get the fuck away. Like you're annoying, you're slow, you're not doing anything right. But it's really because in my mind, everything is out of control and I'm just spiraling and I I just want to turn into Grandpa Joe and lay on the couch all day and watch Star- Starcy and Daisy. Stacy and Darcy. Stacy and Darcy on TLC. If you've never seen it, don't watch it because everything is shit except for Jeff Lewis Live. It's the best thing ever. And I'm going to keep this after show going. I'm so sorry I missed two days. It will never happen again. Yes, it probably will. All right. I love you guys so much. Listen tomorrow if I'm here. No, I will be here. I love you. Bye. Splash, 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 splash your sails, splash your sails.